Hello everybody, this is Dev's Hawks SF here, Kid Desi, and welcome back to Ramblin' Rollers for episode 80 of High Rollers D&D. Now, some shit went down this episode, and we're going to talk about that, but before I do, uh, just warn, a little warn you guys, there will not be an episode of Ramblin' Rollers or High Rollers next week, because Mark and Trot will be away at Empire Lark. So, uh, I will try to have another video in place, maybe I'll review another one shot, maybe it'll be some sort of different video, but I will try my best to have a video in place. If you guys have an idea of what you want to see, tell me down in the comments below, I'd love to hear it. But anyways, let's get into Ram and Roller. So the episode starts out with, alright, so, <clears throat> basically, tr so basically they're still on the ship, ship and stuff, and uh, three of the screens work, but they need uh, some sort of scroll, I think, like, Diviner Invention or something, something, I don't know, I don't remember, I, I forgot to write that down, but anyways... Uh, they're still on the ship, and Trot, Trot, walk, Trot walks out, back out, uh, to the front to check on Princess Felania. Um, also, uh, Reynard che checks down the, the trap door and stuff and sees that a bunch of the Broken Sky troops are retreat, are retreating, thanks to the Elven forces. Um, and so, and when Cam goes to check on Felania, he sees the same thing, but, and like, the clouds are starting to... Uh, push away and you start to see blue sky again, except over Champion's Hold, where there's like this big old thing, which is Felania's castle, and and so ba and basically uh, they assume that's where Felania, where the actual Felania is. So they go, so Fel so Lady Amaryllis goes and gets uh, Trixani, my boy Nalistri, Al Alfred, and uh, a cleric of Bahumet. Bahamut, whatever, Bahumet, uh, whatever, however the hell you pronounce it, and, and so they, they come up here and stuff, we get some Nalore moments, which I, it is always, Nalore moments is always welcome, as long as it isn't horribly angsty, like one of them dies, that's, that's definitely not welcome, but we get a cute little Nalore moment, they hug and stuff, it's adorable, I, I always accept Nalore moments, uh, Nalistri gives Alora a pack, a uh, little satchel, uh, with the Moonspire symbol on it, which is from Alora's mother, which it, which was adorable. I like basically. If there's an Alora moment in an episode, if there's a real cute Alora episode moment, it's in ten out of ten episode. Okay, I I fucking love that shit more than anything. Uh, so <coughs> so they find a way to use the uh, use three screens, and they look on Adric slash Korak, um, Felania, the actual Felania, and they try to and they try to look at Victoria the. The drow woman that was with the Broken Sky and that Loban ran off to. By the way, finally, they mentioned Loban after who knows how long. I'm so glad. It was only a little mention and stuff, but at least they, at least they recognized that he is a traitor. Maybe now he could play some sort of part of the plot. Seriously, bring, bring Loban back. I just want to know what he's been up to. Why did he betray the party? But yeah, anyways, uh, Korak, he's just still fighting. Still going strong. Uh, Victoria, they they uh, failed to connect to, so she is assumed dead. Who killed her? Did Lopin kill her? Did she die in battle? Who knows? Uh, I I'm I'm genuinely curious. But the interest, the real interesting interesting stuff is with Felania. She look Felania looks different than she did in her uh simulation thing. I forgot what the fuck it was called. Sim something whatever. Uh she look she's still cloud giant and stuff. And, but, she's wearing, like, like, more ragged clothes. Not, like, peasant clothes or anything, but more, like, like, fancy clothes that's been worn out. And her hair is just horrible. She has tear stains down her, and she's crying and stuff. And, they, and she has one of the, she has one of the dawn shards in the, on her back. And she is just crying out in pain. And like at this moment, everybody was shocked. I was, I was flabbergasted. I, I was, I was like, whew, just, oh man, that was, that was like a big thing. It's like, like who, and like, who knows how long this has been in her back? Cause like you'll see in a moment. Has it just recently showed up? Has it, ha has it been there the whole time? Because. This is the first time we are seeing the actual Felania. No illusions, no simulation or anything, no tricks. This is the actual 100% Felania. So who knows how long she has had that on her back. And uh, basically, this is where they, they managed to get on Felania's ship. 
and, well, ship, uh, castle. And this is where we find out a little bit of backstory. So, we know her father, uh, he Hecaton, ruled the kingdom a thousand, thousand years ago. It was a small kingdom, but he still ruled it. And he had four children, one of them being Felania. And she seemed like a happy child. She hung to, clung to her father's leg, like in, like, paintings and stuff. So, she was probably very close to her father. And, and then we find out from Felania that, uh, the lightful ha- when the lightful happened, it was- it was the storm giants that- that tried to, like, e ease it all out. They got the worst of it, because they were trying to help the little folk down there, and even though it still did some damage, they- they're the ones that took most of the damage, and they almost got wiped out completely, besides Felania. And that's why they're all dead. We still don't know what caused the lightfall, but we know that they- that that is how they died. And so we- and so we believe that, like, this is- this is- and this is- I am sure that this is where Felania went mad. Because Mark made it clear, like, he even confirmed himself, that Felania is insane. She is not in the right state of mind. She is goddamn- she is just not in the right place of mind. And she- and she's going on about destiny and stuff, and Mark- Mark your destiny on the world. By the way, this is where it's confirmed, like, truly confirmed, that Felania is a mixed breed of Storm and Cloud Giant. I just wanted to point that, that out, cause she said, cause she said that, uh, cause, cause like she was saying that she's like, the, like, like the best, she has both, both Storm and Cloud Giant blood in her and stuff, and that she was made for something special. By the way, I would also like to, uh, point out, that, uh, yesterday, Mark tweeted, I'm working on some notes for a very, very important episode of High Rollers tomorrow. Current whip t current work in progress title is Broken Skies and Shattered Hope. We now, I now know what that means. Uh, like, I, yesterday, all day I was wondering, what could that mean? What could happen? It's like, this, this is what happened. By the way, I gotta give props to Mark once again. This is, like, when we found out that, that Felania was was not the true Felania. I was I was wondering what is like how are we gonna keep the next fight interesting if they're gonna fight the true Felania and not just have it be a copy paste. He did a I think I believe he did a good job another good job at like keeping things fresh and new and exciting with this with this Felania. And now we know more about Felania and now she is um uh, now I see her as a really good villain because like like, that just, this just turned the tables for me, because all this time, for about two and a half years now, we thought Felania was this, was this elegant, was this elegant being. She knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing. She's, like, playing a game of chess. Now we know she's just fucking insane. Like, this was just a trick the entire time to get people on her side. And it, it was, that was a twist and a motherfucking half, okay? Like that was insane, but yeah, the fight go, the fight goes on, and like people are taking a l taking a lot of damage. Even Cam, even Cam went down, and he has confirmed that he no longer has the like born bil abilities. Uh, Judo also. Um, uh, I'd like to also like to point out, burning cold is what happens when you get freezing hot with uh, Felania's armor. Uh, Cam uses his. Alright, so, remember the coin that, uh, Cam got with, uh, with the, with, a uh, Nimbus at the end of his arc, at the end of the Great Bell arc, which was his arc, uh, he uses that this episode, and it turns out, uh, people, most people were speculating it was a wish, even though nothing was confirmed. Turns out, it, they were right, it is a wish from Ava Avandra, and he, and he wishes for help in this battle. Now, I, I personally kinda, kinda, feel like he should have used it to maybe help resurrect resurrect a bunch of people or something. Maybe to get Trelamar back. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's still able to res people. It's expensive, but he still has the power to do it, along with Amarill Lady Amarillus and stuff. Plus, I heard some things about, like, Lady Amarillus having some, like, an orb or something that can break bonds. So, who knows? Maybe we will get Trelly Belly back. Dear God, I hope so. Um, uh... So, yeah, he, he uses a coin, and it summons a diva, 
which was a which had a very epic entrance, superhero entrance, like pfft, like le eyes laying up Thor Ragnarok style, and like and it's like Camp Buckland, I've come to serve you, and it it was damn son, it was it was really epic, uh, so 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 uh yeah, the fight goes on, some things happen. Juno ends up getting the final blow, which ends up knocking her out. But well, actually, no. Wait, before that happens, she gets she gets one blow, and right before Felonia is about to fall, she her hair her white hair glows up, and it's revealed she has Lightborn abilities. Now, uh, from what I read about Lightborn, you can only like you like you're born if you're born a Lightborn, it's you it's pretty much a human form, and this. And plus, Felania was born before the Lightfall, so she had to have had the powers. Either I, I have two theories where she got the powers: either a the light chart that is on her back, or b, uh, remember the uh, uh, she like uh, she was a lying bitch, and she actually knew about the ch children being experimented on, which I am sure she did, and she. And she somehow got at least some of the pa power, at least enough enough of it. Why they were still doing it, I'm not sure. That I heard some theories that there are that there were uh, more Lightborns being kidnapped and experimented on, uh, but nothing has really been confirmed. From I don't know if I truly believe it because because uh, some of the Lightborn children that were kidnapped were from outside of Talisval, but. But uh who but who knows mate uh also we we still don't know if those children ever got their souls back so uh anyways yeah but yeah uh judo gets another strike on her and she's and well judo also falls into pro process like she's not dead she's just kind of passed down and stuff she needs to make a death saving saving throw Felania falls goes my destiny and dies and then the episode ended. Like, oh man, I'm so I'm so sad. There's not going to be an episode next week because I really want to see what happens next. I'm so curious. Where could this go now? What's going to happen to Castle? Is it going to fall? Is it going to stay up? What about the ship? What about everyone else? What What's my boy Alicia doing? I'm always wondering what Alicia's doing. Uh, what about Gronka? Like, oh man, are and like, what's gonna? Big question is what is going to happen after? Like. Are the troops, are the Broken Sky troops going to retreat now that their leader is dead? Or maybe it's like, find out the truth about their leader and change their mind, maybe? Like, like, imagine, like, like, imagine if they make, but, well, actually, they do have to take down some pillars, uh, I just remembered, because, uh, like, so, those pillars apparently are, uh, going, going to fuck up the, uh, because basically, Felania's plan was to basically cause Lightfall 2.0. And that is not good. So they still need to stop that. But I wonder what's going to happen a after. Are the, broken are the remaining members of the Broken Sky going to find out the truth about their leader? That she was actually fucking insane? Are they going to retreat? Are they are they going to die? What's going to happen? And plus, like, after the war... Are they going to get... <laughs> I almost made Hamilton reference. Um, After the war, are we finally going to get our... Are we finally going to get the wedding between Shalana and Pale and Dear God, I hope so. Like, and also the Brassaris arc, I can't wait for that. But I hope, I hope there's at least one episode to kind of buffer, buffer it. Like, 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 like a wedding episode would be absolutely perfect, okay? Just, just have a wedding in the battlefield with the bloodier enemies. That'd be gorgeous, it would be beautiful. Or, you know, at the Elven Autumn Spire, because uh, that, that's also fucking beautiful, because it's the Elven Autumn Spire. I imagine it's a gorgeous place. If, if it's Eternal Autumn, then, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what happened this episode. Uh, also what I would like to mention, Felania had 460 hit points. That is so fucking much. So, oh, like, oh my god, how did they take it down? The party is, the party's kind of fun. Like, has, doesn't really have much now. No more, they, they don't have any more spells or anything. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I hope Judo's okay. Cause, like, she, 
Cause she already died. She already died once in the beginning of the campaign. If she dies again, she she can never come back from that. And if she dies now, that probably means we ain't getting a Brasaurus arc, which I really fucking want a Brasaurus arc. Okay, I I want to see Eva Korak. I want to see some tiefling slaves. I want to free some tiefling slaves. I want to see Brasaurus. Okay, I I want to see that. I want to get some closure on her story. Okay, that that is. That is all I want after this. That and a lesbian elven wedding. And for no and for Grunkner to become canon. I was gonna say Nalora, but Nalora is already canon. I want them to stay alive. I want okay, I want a lot of things from this series, but okay. Uh yeah, that's about it for this episode. Uh before I leave, I'm gonna I'm gonna I forgot the last few episodes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do a quote of the episode. Quote of the episode is from Cam, and you know what we do have? No time. But yeah, that was basically High Rollers, episode 80. That's my thoughts on it. What did you guys think about it? Tell me down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And that was an... Personally, I thought it was an amazing episode. I I was pumped the whole time. time, And I can't wait to see what happens next. I just wish we didn't have to wait two weeks, man. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I will see you in next episode. Peace.